Hey guys, Darren with you here for East Woodland Survival. Pouring the rain outside today, so I thought I'd do another in-the-house project. I'm going to make a couple little hobo stoves today. Uh, really easy, really cheap, simple, and uh, make them out of stuff that you just recycle. So uh, they can be used over and over again. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty easy and effective way to uh, heat water or uh, to cook your food. So uh, stay with me and I'll show you how that's done. You're going to need a few simple things for this project. <clears throat> You're going to need a, a pretty good size, it's like a normal can. And uh, you're going to need another smaller can that will fit inside the other can, like so. You're going to need some gulf wax, beeswax works, candle wax will work. I like a piece of aluminum foil, uh, this keeps everything nice and neat. You're going to need uh, some way like a, uh, a church key that open a can. I'm just using my multi tool here. You don't have to have these but it sure helps. Just a pair of tin snips. And a piece of cardboard. Then you need a double broiler. And I've just got an old pan and another smaller pan and inside this is the wax. And I have water on the outside. Be really careful with this guys because it can uh, start fires if you're uh, use an open flame around this. You don't want it to get into the wax because wax is flammable. So be very careful. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to set this camera up really quick. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cardboard. I'm just going to kind of measure it out about the size of the can. I want it to be just a little bit less. So I'm just going to mark that using my multi-tool. Then, I'm going to cut these strips, I'm going to cut about three strips, the full length of this cardboard. Now this is not all that big of a piece of cardboard, just a, uh, an old junky piece. So we're going to cut this into strips. You know, if you've got a pair of scissors, that works great. I can use the scissors on a multi-tool. You can use a knife, whatever, just be careful when you do it. And then I'm going to find my marking. And I'm just going to kind of cut along my marking. This doesn't have to be precise. You don't have to worry about keeping your cardboard straight. Because you're going to roll it up. Once you have two or three strips like this, <clears throat> you just want to go inside your can. You just want to start lining the inside of the can. A smaller can and make that clear. I just want to roll this around on the inside of the can. You're going to continue this process until you get that pr pretty much completely full of cardboard like that. Then we're just going to take some of our wax And we're going to pour, it's going to be hard to do left-handed, we're just going to pour this straight in on top of our cardboard. Now you can see the reason for the, uh, for the aluminum foil, because uh, it could get everywhere with you. Now you need to let this uh, set and harden just for a minute before you start messing with it, uh, because right now it's still very hot. The sides are very hot, and uh, it needs to like uh, set and uh, harden up. While our uh, piece is cooling over there, we're going to uh, make our uh, burner part here. Uh, this is just a normal tin can. And we're going to come in with our multi-tool. And I'm just going to get, if you've got one of these, like a little can opener, they work just as well. But you're going to go in right on the side 
this is the can, the bottom of the can that's not been opened. You're going to go right in at the can, and you're just going to make some little marks around the top of the can. Oh, about an inch apart or so. This just gives it a little bit more air. Doesn't matter if you dent it up a little bit. As you can see, I dented it up a little bit. That'll be perfect. This will burn off. So the next step we want to do is we want to create a little trap door just using some uh, tin snips. And I like to find the seams on the can because that's kind of a weak point anyway. And I uh, just kind of follow the seam up. We want to go up about the height of our can. A little bit taller than that. So probably about a little over halfway for this size can. And go to about there. Then I'm going to go figure out about the width of my can. I want to make this door just a little bit wider than the width of the can. Now, you can cut this off. Be careful not to cut yourself on this. You can cut this off, and these are going to be a little sharp, so be very careful. Uh, it's not really sharp enough to cut me, but, uh, you know, I don't want anybody getting cut. So, uh, you can kind of make your door, set it down, and see if your can will actually slide in there. And it does. You can leave this on or cut it off. I'm going to cut this one off. So we can actually see uh, what's going on. And like I say, be very careful of these edges. Don't want anybody getting cut. You can kind of roll them in a little bit if you want to, but I just don't want anybody getting cut. So now let's see what we got. Maybe a little bit wider on the door. And there we have it, just like so. Now, if you want to add some more air into this thing, all you have to do is go in, just around the bottom here, do the same thing with your church key, and just kind of open these up a little bit. And we'll do this on the back, because I know it'll bend on if I get around toward the front here. So uh, you may want to do this prior to uh, cutting the door. Okay, next step, you need to put a couple of little holes to the top of this. Just do that with your can opener. This is going to allow the heat to come up through it. One more. You just got a little pattern like that. A little pattern around the sides. It's just to let some air in and let some heat out. I've got a little bit of a burr right here. So like I say, be careful when you cut these things. Don't want anybody cutting themselves. So I'm just going to cut that off with my tin snips. Okay, at this point... My uh, stuff hasn't dried completely. You can still see it's a little, a little wet down in there. So we're going to come back as soon as this dries up, and I'm going to show you the rest of this. Okay, guys, this thing's hardened up a little bit more. So uh, 
I'm just going to take something flat to set this on, just because I won't set very flat on the eye. And I'm going to put this uh, my stove down. And I'm going to take this little can, and I'm going to take my lighter. And this is what you've created is just a big giant candle, basically. And we're going to just catch this on fire around the top. And we're just going to slide it into our cooker. Leave this door on without having to cut it and just use a regular can. You just need to make sure you put several holes all in the can to where this thing can get enough uh, room to uh, get some oxygen. Now one thing too is if you save these little can lids you can kind of use it like a damper. You know if it's getting too hot or uh, not not uh, to your liking or something you can actually dampen this down a little bit just by using the can lid. Now this will get hot too so uh, you know that's where your multi-tool can come into play just reach in, you know, and grab it. And it can also be used to help put it out. So if I need to put this out, I can just pull it off to the side. Now this will burn for a pretty good while, guys. Uh, it's a, uh, you can see I got some few little bubbles in there, not a lot. Water is warm, warm enough for some tea or something. And that was only a couple of minutes. Once this thing completely cools, you can just absolutely store it inside the can. The great thing about using this size can is it'll fit two of these burners inside of it. That gives you several days of being able to Use it as a candle, use it as a heating source, use it as light, or use it for cooking. Uh, this is not my idea. I actually learned this in Boy Scouts years ago. So, uh, it's called a little hobo stove. You can see we really didn't burn up a lot in our uh, uh, little burner here. Well, guys, this is Darren with East Woodland Survival. I uh, really appreciate you guys viewing. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, and uh, I hope you uh, learned something from this video. I learned uh, this in actually Boy Scouts when I was probably about 11 or 12 years old. And uh, I've used these many, many times, not just for cooking, but also for light and for fire starting. I uh, may make a video using the same process on how to do a fire starter that's really simple. So, uh, guys, thanks for everything, and I hope to see you in the woods.